Hi friends, whether or not you are investing in the US market, I think you are gonna want to stick around for this because the US Central Bank or the Federal Reserve or we call it the Fed, just made a series of announcements that will definitely affect your pocket and your portfolio return in the coming months. Let's begin with the elephant in the room. The Fed just raised the interest rate by 25 basis points or 0.25% and that makes the effective Fed funds rate to be standing at a range of 4.75 to 5% right now. And this marks the 9 interest rate hike that the Fed has made since 12 months ago back in March 2022 when the Fed funds rate was near zero. So obviously it has has been a very aggressive move which has put every investor on the edge because we are starting to see the effect of it manifesting itself in the form of the losses in the banking sectors and that slowly snowballed into the collapse of Silvergate Bank, Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank and also Credit Suisse and potentially First Republic Bank and also Pacific Western Bank. Yeah, that is a lot of banks that unfortunately could not withstand the pressure from the rate hikes. And because of that, Jerome Powell, the Fed chairman, said the committee did consider a pause in the rate hikes but eventually still voted and they got a unanimous decision. 18 out of 18 votes to go through with 25 bits rate hike in order to bring inflation back down to 2%. And in case you're wondering, he also said that while the economy ahead may be uncertain, rate cuts are not currently in the central bank's baseline expectation meaning don't expect any reduction of interest rate in 2023. But that is of course what he says. We need to know that raising interest rates any further means more long-term bond prices will crash even further. And since banks tend to hold large portfolios of bonds on their balance sheet, this means more banks will suffer higher unrealized losses. And if made worse by any bank run, which means everyone withdraw left and right, then what Silicon Valley Bank shown us is the best example of what could happen if the banks start selling their toxic bonds in order to raise cash to stay afloat. And this is why the bond market already thinks that the Fed cannot sustain such interest rate levels and will be forced to cut rates sooner. Look at the two-year bond yield chart. It has fallen to below 4% from the 5% level just a few weeks ago. What this means is the market no longer believes the rate will maintain at 5.1% like what the Fed says. And instead, they think there is a high chance of a 100 basis point rate cut in the near future i.e. a recession could come sooner than later in this year. Quick pause, if you found these updates helpful, I would be very grateful if you can check out Interactive Brokers in the pinned comment down below. Start trading with the most reputable and well-regulated broker that allows you to trade fractional shares in the US, for which many other stockbrokers don't offer. And the best of all, their fee package is easily one of the cheapest among all other stockbrokers. Thank you so much. Okay, back to the video. So let's take a look at the summary of economic projections, which is something that the Federal Reserve will release every quarterly in March, June, September and December. And of course, this release is a revision of the numbers they made back in December of 2020. It's basically a set of projection numbers that tells you what the Fed is projecting for the US economy in terms of the key economic indicators like the interest rates, unemployment rate, inflation, etc. etc. Basically, all the important numbers that give you a good picture of a country's economic outlook. And now, don't be intimidated by this table. It's actually much simpler than it looks. Allow me to bring you through the key points. So let's focus on the median side of the table and we'll start from the bottom which is the federal funds rate or interest rates projection and as you can see here the fed is projecting the interest rate to hit a peak of 5.1 percent in 2023 and thereafter rate cuts in 2024 and in case you're wondering the fed always quotes interest rates in a range and since now we stand at 4.75 to 5 percent that means there will only be one more interest rate hike or 25 basis points this year to make it 5 percent to 5.25 and if you look at this dot plot chart, where each dot represents a vote by each of the 18 Federal Reserve Committees on the future path of the interest rates, you can see 10 out of 18 of them only expect one more rate hike this year. Alright, pretty simple, right? So back to this table, 5.1% as quoted here is actually the average number in between 5 to 5.25%. And that is actually the same number as what they projected back in December before the release of the two CPI report in January and February that showed the inflation was still stubborn and BlackRock economies even called for a potential 6% terminal Fed funds rate. But of course, the banking crisis unfolded 
folded afterwards and the Fed has no choice but to take their feet off the pedal for a little bit before everything crumbles. So the fact that these 5.1% remain unchanged, it seems insignificant. But boy, let me tell you, it probably went through a lot of revisions and revisions before coming back to square one. And moving on, the Fed also revised the core PC inflation to go down to 3.6%, a little bit higher than the previously projected 3.5%, but it's still a huge drop from the 4.7% core PCE inflation that we have right now for the month of January. And in terms of unemployment rate, the Fed is actually revising down from the 4.6% in December to now 4.5% for 2023. And they think the unemployment rate will peak at 4.6% over the next year before it comes down. And same goes to real GDP or gross domestic product. They are revising the 2023 numbers to be down from 0.5 to 0.4% and also down from 1.6 to 1.2% in 2024. So if you put all the numbers together, you can already see the big picture already. The Fed is telling us that they expect the economy to grow weaker in the months to come because they are expecting the GDP or gross domestic product again to be falling, unemployment rate to go up and the inflation to come down, all of which points to a relatively weaker economy as compared to their December projection. So after the FOMC meeting, here's a summary of what you can expect next for the near term to come. One, with higher rates and high chance of another rate hike later this year, probably on the 3rd of May, if not June, it means there will be more pressure towards the broader economy and more particularly the banking sector, which has already shown signs of cracking already. And don't be surprised to see more banks come under distress, even with the BTFP program and discount window available to them, which I have explained earlier. And worst case is of course a full-blown recession. But then again, we all know what the Fed is capable of doing with their money printer on standby. And number two, slightly related to the previous point, the possibility of a credit crunch is much higher now, which means banks will have significantly lower appetite to simply lend their money to people because they want to de-risk or reduce the weighted average risk on their balance sheet. So if that happens, loans will be harder to get and then borrowing costs will increase significantly. Businesses might not survive, people might lose their job and so on and so forth. And that of course will have an immediate impact on average Americans which will eventually propagate towards the global economy because it is all integrated. And number three, this is pretty obvious, but higher interest rates would also translate to higher borrowing costs. Like I've mentioned earlier, when the US is rising their interest rates, central banks all over the world would usually follow suit because if they don't, investors will all flock towards the US dollar treasury for safe haven instead. And we have just recently seen the European Central Bank ECB raise another 50 basis points and also the Swiss National Bank SMB as well as Bank of England also followed suit as well. So when that happens, you can expect our nation's central bank to be pressured to follow as well. And that will definitely increase our cost of borrowing in terms of mortgage, car loans, business loans, personal loans, etc. So for what it's worth, plan your budget ahead of the next rate hike by your central bank. And lastly, if history was any indicator, the last time we were at this 5% level was right before the 0809 subprime mortgage crisis. So if anything starts breaking up again, if not already, then you can definitely expect the Fed to start turning on their money printer and start quantitative easing QE. It could come in many forms rate cuts, short-term loan facilities, bailouts, etc, etc. But they have all one thing in common. They are injecting additional liquidity or money into the economy. And that will definitely flow into the stock market and asset prices will rise thereafter. So I could be wrong, but I will remain invested in the market because time in the market beats timing the market. We just don't know what will happen in the future, especially in this crazily brittle market. Alright, that's all I have for you now. You are now fully updated with the latest interest rate hike. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead scrolling your phone. And as usual, I will see you in the next one.